Hey there, everyone. It's Denise Salcedo, and we are just a couple of days away from AEW Revolution. And with me today is one of the men that's going to be taking part in the eight man scramble for a chance to face the AEW World Champion. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome the Murder Hawk monster, Lance Archer. Lance, welcome to the show. How are you? What's up? I'm doing good. You doing all right? Yeah, I'm doing pretty damn good. I got to tell you, I'm looking forward uh, to Revolution. I'm going to be there. Uh, I'm excited. you got a big matchup. Let's start yep. there. All right. <laughs> well, seven other people are going to die. You know, everybody dies. <laughs> Oh, my God. like easy, easy. But here's the thing, though, Lance, um, fans were kind of a little bit, you know, we got really excited because we thought we were going to be seeing this meat <laughs> madness match. And let's be right. real. Everybody loves meat. And right. unfortunately, you know, Tony Khan basically said that's off the table now. Um, I wanted to get your thoughts on that. Yeah, I mean, I, I, I kind of found out that, you know, in real time, like everybody else did. Um, you know, it's unfortunate that it's not happening the way it was, you know, there's still a lot of meat in this all-star <laughs> scramble, you know, Wardlow, Hobbs and myself are still in it. We've added Brian Cage, obviously Chris Jericho, um, Hook, who's going to be <laughs> dealing with some big old dudes, who knows who the next two guys are to fill it out. Um, but, you know, I, I think the all-star scramble is going to be really cool. It's going to be a lot of fun um, for me anyway, the other seven guys, not so much. Um, you know, and then obviously this is for the uh, number one contendership, um, whereas the meat madness, I think, was just going to be fun. You know, I think there was a little bit of back and forth, whether people wanted to see it or didn't want to see it or didn't like it or liked it or wherever it was. And that just seems to be the Internet these days. Everybody loves to yell and scream at each other and argue. Uh, but I think in the end, once it was going to happen, whether it had just been the three of us or more guys, which is what it kind of sounds like it was going to be, um, it was just going to be a lot of big meaty men slapping meat like uh <laughs> my good friend over there says sometimes. Hell yeah, man. Like I said, I think people definitely wanted to see that. And I you know it sucks that we're to have it's not happening. So right. we'll just have to wait it's to okay. eventually see that. But it's okay because we're getting eight men scramble again for the number one contendership. And there's a lot of I mean, you got Hobbs in there, you got Wardlow, yourself, Chris Jericho, you mentioned Hook. I mean, there's gonna be a lot in there. What would it mean to you to get a victory in this match to, you know, become the number one contender for the AW World Championship? Right. I, I've, and I've been in that boat before. I've obviously already fought for the AW World Championship twice, once against uh, Moxley, once against Adam Page in a, in a Texas death match. Um, so for me, it would kind of be getting back on track as a singles wrestler in AEW. You know, I'm kind of been in and out and that's fine. That's how the business goes. I've been teaming with the Righteous and having some fun and some six man action. Um, but this is an opportunity to take down some of the biggest and best in AEW and become the number one contender and then go on to face uh, whoever wins out of that triple threat at the the pay-per-view. Right. And so, you know, you mentioned kind of being in and out sometimes in mm -hmm. AEW. Obviously, you've been doing a lot of stuff also outside yeah. of AEW. But um, how has that been for you to sort of navigate and still keep a presence on AEW? Because, you know, being part of the AEW roster, you want to make sure that, you know, people... You know, they say that saying out of sight, out of mind, right. but you want to make sure that, you know, people remember and are excited when they see Lance Archer. Well, I think that's the fun part about being the murder hog monster is I think every single time that I step out there when that countdown starts and I come storming down the ramp and I'm, you know, carrying my opponent to the ring or kicking him in the head to the ring or whoever I'm fighting at that moment, like, I like to believe that that's an unfor unforgettable moment. And even though I'm kind of out of sight, out of mind at times, when I show back up, the people are excited to see it. They remember what they see and they can't wait to see more. Yeah, because, okay, your match against Hangman Adam Page um, for the, te the Texas death match, dude, that was one of my favorite matches, especially like for Hangman Adam Page's reign as AW world champion. I loved that match. Um, talk to us about getting to, you know, I know it's, you know, been a while, but mm -hmm. talk to us about your memories and how you look back at that match. Well, uh, other than the fact that I didn't win, um, it was uh, it was a fun match. I enjoy those kind of hard physical matches. And the fun part about a Texas Death match is there aren't a lot of rules, so you kind of just get to do whatever you want, whenever you want, and wherever you want in the arena, and you can try to win. And you know, Paige was he's he was a smart champion. Um, you know, I tried to take take away the buckshot lariat, um, and he found a way to get the buckshot lariat, and 
he hit me with it and we went through some tables on the floor and he was able to get up and get in the ring just before I could get up. And, you know, he, he maintained being champion. So I, I have to give credit where credit is due. He was a fighting champion and he fought through a lot in that match. Um, so it, it, it's a good memory of mine. It's one of those things, like you said, you know, it's one of the matches that people seem to bring up. Uh, my two de Texas death matches are probably the two most brought up matches for me in my career in AEW. And the other one being with Moxley for the IWGP US title, the New Japan title. Um, so it, I, I kind of fit in that realm of style of fighting. So it's fun to do. Uh, I hope to get to do another one sooner than later. And I'd like to do it again for the AEW championship and become champion finally. Yeah, I was going to say, I think that means we need to see more Texas death matches from you, Lance. I think we definitely Texas. do. I'm from Texas. It makes sense. <laughs> yeah. They keep, having these, they keep having these Texas death matches with not a Texan in them. So I'm like, what the hell? <laughs> You're like, damn, sign me up. Put me in there. Right. Um, Lance, so the other thing in regards to Revolution, and it's really the big thing for Revolution, is that we are going to be seeing Sting's last match. Obviously, right. as somebody that is not only a pro wrestler, but also a fan. Uh, Lance, tell us about how you feel um, seeing Sting having his last match and what your favorite memories of him are, like either personal memories or from watching him in his career. Yeah, I mean, you know, Sting is the reason that I got into the business of professional wrestling. He was... You know, I was a big fan of the movie The Crow, and then he donned that persona. Um, so it, it made me want to watch him, and he made me become a pro wrestling fan. And I was a huge, huge, huge WCW fan uh, when I first started. I only watched WCW. Um, and then, obviously, it came, became where I watched everything that was uh, available. Um, and, you know, and then fast forward to me in the business, and, you know, he was at TNA when I started at TNA back in 2004. Uh, got to be a part of his movie that he filmed there. Uh, got to be around him. He offered a lot of advice. We became friends. You know, um, his, his family, his brother's a pastor. They opened up a church in Texas. So I got to spend time around him and his family in their church. Um, and then, you know, fast forward to AEW, getting to be around him yet again. And, and then ultimately getting to finally have a, a moment in the ring with him in that six man that we did against uh, him, Darby and Adam Copeland. Um, and you now, you know, I'm, I'm a part of the pay-per-view that's going to be his last, his last ride, his last hurrah in the business. So for me, it's an honor to be there, to witness it, to watch it, and to see him kind of ride off into the sunset, being that for me, he's been the most integral part of my career, the reason I got into it. Uh, like I said, times I've advised it through the middle of it, and now, you know, being able to see the end of it. Man, that's really cool to like you mentioned, like everything, like even the TNA stuff, the movie stuff, like all of mm -hmm. that is really awesome. And I think the, I think everybody, like whether you're a fan, whether you're a professional in the business, everyone's going to like stop what they're doing and like watch this moment unveil. Yep. So that's going to be very exciting uh, for Revolution. Now, I do want to go ahead and touch on some other items here. And one of them being that you were recently on uh, the Jericho cruise. Yep. And now I've never been on a cruise. <laughs> I've never been on a wrestling cruise ever. What was the experience like? That it was the first for me on both of those. You know, I was, I was actually supposed to be on the Jericho cruise uh, a couple years ago, and then uh, I was needed for Dynamite, so I went and wrestled on Dynamite. So this was my first time actually being on any cruise and then being on a wrestling cruise. And, you know, I had no idea what to expect. I was just hoping for calm waters because I guess last year they ran into a situation where the, the weather and the waters got so bad, they were, like, basically on cabin lot for about 24 hours. Um, so I was really hoping we didn't experience that. We had one real night, one night of real rough waves, uh, got through that and, uh, you know, it was fine. I had to wrestle Rocky Romero uh, while the boat was rocking. So between the boat rocking, the wind blowing and me throwing, uh, Rocky Romero was not having a good time. Um, so, um, you know, but it, it was a lot of fun. You know, it was one of those things where you couldn't really take a moment to relax much because there were, you know, it's just, it's full of fans, but to the fans credit, they were beyond respectful. Like I never felt overwhelmed by the fans. They were always very respectful. You know, they would always be, ask for permission to uh, uh, take a picture with you or whatever they wanted at the moment. Because again, when you're walking around the ship, it's just, you're in that ship with them the whole time. Um, so, you know, it was one of those things I didn't know what to expect, but it ended up being a, a really good experience, a lot of fun. You know, we got to spend some time in Cozumel for, um, you know, uh, well, I don't know what, 12 hours we were at port or something like that. So that was a lot of fun. Um, you know, all of it was a great experience. I hope I get to go back, you know, and I got to be a part of the, the, the main event of the entire, you know, cruise, you know, in the six man with me, Hobbs and, uh, um, in the, the Don, uh, Don Callis family against Jericho, uh, big Paul white and, um, uh, fastball, 
uh, so we we had a, we had a lot of fun. I was going to say, I always wondered about that dynamic with the pro wrestlers and the fans and being, you know, basically stuck in this one big ship and how, how the balance is. So it's good to hear that, you know, obviously that there's boundaries and people are respectful. That's very cool uh, yep. to hear. Now, the other thing that I wanted to make sure that I touched on with you is at yes. the end of last year, like towards the end, you were part of the New Japan Pro Wrestling Tag Team League. Mm -hmm. And you got to obviously be out there in Japan, a place mm -hmm. you're very familiar with and uh, getting to do all of these tag teams matches um what was that experience like you know being there and doing that for the latter portion of the year you know i, I mean the biggest bulk of my career was in japan so i did nine years there uh had been a part of the world tag league many times over won it with minoru suzuki when i first started back in 2011 um teamed with davy boy smith jr as kes for several years you know as champions in the tag league and then this year was a, a new experience teaming with uh, Alex Zane and we had a fun tag team. We call ourselves monster sauce because he's the sauce and I'm obviously the monster. And we found a cool, fun dynamic because he does some really amazing and cool stuff. And then obviously I'm just the big, bad brawler basher that knocks people's teeth in and the combination of the two using him as a weapon. And he found a couple ways to use me as a weapon against people. And so it was, it was a fun dynamic. You know, we recently got to wrestle a couple times here in the U S and, uh, We've wrestled on New Japan Strong. We wrestled in the New Japan Tag League. We're hoping that at one point, uh, Tony will will bring in Monster Sauce to AEW and he'll get to experience the sauce for himself. And it'll be a lot of fun. Yeah, I was going to say, uh, I don't know if there's Taco Bell in Japan. I'm going to guess not because I know he loves Taco Bell. <laughs> yes, he's he's kind of got a little bit of a sponsorship in Japan <laughs> with Taco Bell. He's got his own Okay, so there is Japan. Taco Bell in Japan, right? Yeah, he's got his own meal at the at the Taco Bells. Like fans can go in and get the uh, Alex Zane combo or whatever it's called. It's it's cool. Oh my god, like no, that's freaking cool. Yeah, I wasn't yeah. sure exactly like where the, the sponsorship or anything like that was, but that's freaking yep. awesome. No, I remember I was at GCW actually when uh he had the moment where the the little pe I forgot what it was. I think it was glass that went into his eye, and it was so terrifying yeah you should see the pictures of his basically is is the uh the pupil bleeding oh. out and I'm, when i say bleeding i don't mean red blood i mean the black part of your eye it started spreading and like it just started opening up <laughs> oh man you know, and it's it's like the first thing that pops into my mind when i think of alex Zane. it's the the, the the glass in the eye and taco bell <laughs> Yes. Yeah. Well, first thing popped in his mind was that piece of glass. So. I know. Oh my God. Oh, <laughs> but it was very cool that you guys got to obviously team together and get yeah. to do that. Right. My final question is, you know, we're going into 2024. Um, we were talking earlier about kind of seeing you like in and out when it comes to AEW. Um, mm -hmm. What are some of the goals you have within AEW for this year? And then I'm assuming, you know, obviously wanting to be, um, you know, more active on TV. Right. Yeah, I mean, I, I I think my goal always is to always make an impact every time that I do get a chance to go out there. Um, this match that's on the pay-per-view is my first pay-per-view match in <laughs> almost three years. So I'm planning on making a huge impact. And it's one of those things because, again, we have such an amazingly stacked roster from top to bottom, men and women, all of them, every person that steps out there, they make an impact themselves. So, you know when you get a chance you go out there and you do your best so 2024 for me is just continue to make an impact continue to be somebody that people want to see every time that i come out there wanting to see more of that and you know hopefully that more opportunities come and that bigger opportunities come and that more is made of each of those opportunities every time they come I look forward to that, man, because like I said, I've enjoyed your work in AEW and enjoy your work in New Japan, obviously, and just all of that. So we do hope to get to see more of that.